Welcome to Healthy Sexy Nutrition with me, Michelle Fox, culinary nutritionist, health coach, and your host for this podcast. I teach busy professionals how to get more nutrition in their bodies and how to have more fun in their home kitchens. If you struggle with consistency or sometimes forget to make your needs a priority or you avoid planning your meals, you, my friend, are in the right place. Join me each week for inspiration to increase your energy, discover new recipes, manage your hormonal woes, and so much more. You are a busy professional, but that does not mean your nutrition should suffer. You deserve to live in a body and have a life that you love. So let's dig in. If you are watching this episode on YouTube, you will notice your girl is wearing her swimsuit cover up. And trying to get my beach vibes going because I am packing my bags. We are headed to the Dominican Republic this October, and I would love to have you join us. Head on over to cravewellness.com forward slash retreat, and you will see all of the beautiful details, including the photos of the very dreamy home we have reserved that's right on the beach of course we'll have easy links for you to click in the show notes so this is actually it just occurred to me this is my first guest that I have had twice on the show oh. so this is like it's pretty time good to day. celebrate <laughs> oh my gosh I did not know that Yes, you you are my Very esteemed kind. guest, clearly. Thanks for having me, Michelle. Thanks for having mm-hmm. me again. Yes, so my friends who did not hear our first episode, of course, go back. I will link that in the show notes. But for this episode, I've got Dr. TJ with me to talk about gut health. Just in case you have not met this powerhouse, let me read his bio. So Dr. Tyrell Jenkins, affectionately known as Dr. TJ, his medical journey started by attending Howard University College of Medicine in Washington, D.C. He also completed his residency in internal medicine in D.C. as well. So Dr. TJ, he initially practiced hospital medicine, and became chief of hospital at a regional hospital in Maryland. After that, he then moved to New York City, one of my former stomping grounds, and this is where he currently practices primary care in private practice. He absolutely enjoys the relationships that he builds with his patients, which is why I'm so thrilled that he's going to be with us loving on and helping our participants heal at our retreat. But just to finish his bio, because you can see I'm I'm very excited to get in this conversation with him. His next step was to create Crave Wellness because he was craving something that was very much needed in the medical world. His hope is that Crave Wellness will help people gain medical knowledge and learn about amazing wellness destinations that will truly make a positive impact on the quality of their life and their community. So Dr. TJ, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Michelle. It's great being back on. Mm, I like uh, I, I, that just tickled me at the time of this recording it is a Friday my friends and so if you hear Dr. TJ and I giggling you know just give us a little bit of grace there <laughs> we are getting ready for the weekend oh my goodness yes and it is time to have fun we we all deserve some fun so speaking of fun before we jump into the juicy gems of gut health and our gut health healing retreat in the Dominican Republic, I would like to invite you to play a rapid fire game with me. Oh gosh. All right. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Bring it on. This is a fun one. Okay. Your favorite travel destination thus far? Ooh, uh, Thailand. I think Thailand. Thailand or Bali? One of the mm-hmm. two. 
Mm-hmm. Nope, because we're friends and partners oh, now. Favorite. I'm going to force you to pick You're one. You're going to push me into it? Thailand. I'll go with Thailand. Thailand. I yeah. love it. Last show that you binged and loved? Ooh, Secession. One you know, thing that you are grateful for? Life. You know, being able to wake up every day and do what I love. So very grateful for that life, living, healthy. Look at that. We did rapid fire and we got through it like in a rapid fire when? way. Nicely done. Well, I caught up on the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's part that of the privilege funny. of being an invited, a re-invited guest, right? <laughs> a redo. Let's jump into the fun part. Well, fun for you and I, because my friends who clicked on this link, they saw the title, Why Your Gut Health Matters. And I really want to jump in to give people tactical tools that they can work with starting now so that they can have more energy, so they can feel better about their bodies, so they can feel better in their bodies. And so just to begin with, when I use the term gut health, what does that mean to you? Yeah. So gut health is crucial. So gut health means overall wellness of your digestive tract. It's meaning that you're getting appropriate nutrients and minerals. You feel that things are balanced. Your microbiome, which is a community of bacteria within your gut, is, is at, a, at a good balance. Everything is in sync. So gut health is that entirety of a good gut. Hmm. I know you are licensed and you are studied and and have all of the certifications for the Western medicine. And I have studied a lot of the Eastern medicine where they talk about how our gut is actually our second brain. And I know a lot of the work that you and I have talked about, it sounds like you have seen perhaps something similar. Like, do you have a similar belief? As far as the yeah, gut times, right? If if your gut health is out of whack, it's not in balance, you're dealing with digestive issues, it's going to play a role in feeling fatigue, feeling stress, increasing stress levels. So what we're finding out is that your digestive tract, your gut is actually responsible for making nearly 20% of the serotonin in your body. So this isn't just your brain doing all the work, your gut has a has a part in it too. So there is a connection. And the serotonin, that's one of the feel-good hormones. Am I correct? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. A neurotransmitter. So, you know, medications call it SSRI, serotonin, selective receptor inhibitors or selective serotonin receptor inhibitors that keep serotonin circulating throughout the body a little bit longer. So kind of feel good, you know. Areas where serotonins are decreased can lead to anxiety, can lead to depression. So your gut has an important role in that. Mm, I'm so glad you pulled that out because a lot of my friends who are listening right now are typically either going through perimenopause or menopause. And so with the work that I do, and I try to make nutrition delicious, most important, and of course, fun, we talk a lot about how the foods we eat do affect our hormones. And so I know you know a bit more about the science and how that actually works, but it's so interesting because in the United States of America, melatonin has been shown to be the number one over-the-counter supplement that people grab mm. for. And why that has my attention is because that tells me that we are tired here in America. A lot of us do struggle with sleep issues. And my personal belief, and I'd love to hear your perspective in a moment, but my personal belief is the increased levels of cortisol we've got streaming through our bodies because of the stress that a lot of us are going through. But it's also because we are moving so fast. A lot of us do put our nutrition to the side. And so all the preservatives, the sugar, the alcohol, the caffeine, again, it's up in that cortisol level. Mm -hmm. And so people feel like they need to grab that melatonin to bring them back to allow them to sleep at night. What is your perspective on that one? Yeah, you know, that's one of the top five things that a person comes to the office for me, and it's sleep issues. So insomnia, and it's tied into stress. So it's almost like peeling back an onion. How's work? How's the home environment? Taking care of children, taking care of households. But then nutrition ends up being on the back burner. So their diet is poor. And it's not that there's no 
you know, feeling of wanting a healthier diet is just the nature of time management. And that all affects quality of sleep and the ability to sleep. So people can become tired of being tired. And so melatonin is usually the first go-to that many people try, you know, in addition to like chamomile tea and relaxation. But I do have, you know, several patients who come to me because they've tried melatonin and it just hasn't worked or, you know, they've been on it for a while and they're just concerned about being on it for several months if it has any adverse, you know, effects. Well, and that's what I like to talk to my clients about, like melatonin for a couple of weeks. If it helps, great. But if I'm noticing you're on it longer than three months, I'm like, mm, probably time to talk to a medical professional about other alternatives. Yeah. Do you feel the same way? Yeah. You know, there's not many good high quality studies for long-term use in melatonin. So many of the data that we have right now is about short-term use and then you can go anywhere and you can find different dosages so you're not sure what dose to take what to start on what is too high um so you know kind of abusing supplements and and that safety is an issue because that's not really regulated um, so yeah i would definitely say speak to a medical professional speak to your provider to see if there's any kind of concerns if you've been on it for more than three months is definitely that time to have that discussion Thank you. Recently, I taught a private workshop about insomnia and sleep apnea and restless leg syndrome. And I taught how nutrition can support those things. And what I found really interesting when I was doing the research and putting the presentation together, that all of the definitions that I grabbed from these medical articles would start with you know, sleep apnea is a common disorder mm. or restless leg syndrome is a common. And so the word common kept coming up. And mm. so, yes, a lot of us are struggling. And I want to talk about a few tools that we can help. But before that, because I kind of feel like we're talking to the masses at this level, but you actually dove in more directly with IBS. Will you tell mm. us a little bit about the book that you recently wrote? Yeah, so it's a ebook. It's called the IBS Reset. So it's for patients who highly suspect that they have IBS or it's confirmed that they have IBS. This is the ebook for people not only trying to gain general knowledge about IBS, but they've become frustrated by trying different diets. They are trying to identify what their triggers are. So it's over 70 pages. So it's very comprehensive. And we go through not only the, you know, the, the nerdy medical things, but we also go through new innovative information that's coming out about IBS, food sensitivities, and some of the mind and body approaches to helping, you know, manage IBS. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So my friends who are struggling with IBS, of course, grab this ebook. We will have that linked in the show notes. And also, I would love to nudge you to strongly consider joining us on our retreat in the Dominican Republic. We will be there October 18th through the 22nd, where you will have access to Dr. TJ. And so you will have those days to ask your personal questions if you want, including, I know at the time of this recording, the first four people who sign up will get that opportunity to have a very distinct one-to-one -one consultation with Dr. TJ and myself. And so I would hate for you to miss out on that. So head to cravewellness.com forward slash retreat and apply. We'd love to have you in this circle. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a lot of fun. And that one-to-one -one time is going to allow people to really talk about their individual issues, what their journey has been about. And even if you're not in the first, you know, four who enroll, this is going to be five days of great information. You're going to feel really fulfilled at the end. Yes. So again, I love that you have this resource for people who are struggling with IBS. Yeah. And I love that you will be available for those of us who may struggle with other issues, whether it is yeah. around sleep or specifically with our gut. And so for my friends who are listening, Dr. TJ, do you have three things that perhaps they can look at even just today to start mm -hmm. building a healthier gut? Yeah. So there's an interesting probiotic, prebiotic strain called echomasia. 
we can put it in the show notes. And if you look into it, it is a strain that helps produce what is called mucin, which is a nice gut layer, a nice gut barrier in your intestines. And we're finding that that helps support your immune system. It helps decrease permeability, which is like leaky gut is a, is a term that you've probably heard on social media, which decreases, you know, the infection rates or fatigue or brain fog issues. So looking into prebiotics and probiotics, that's one thing that can be a, a, a high suggestion. The other thing is starting a food symptom journal. So, and what that means is if you're noticing that you're having indigestion, loose stools, constipation, brain fog, all of these things, you want to kind of create a food symptom journal. When are you feeling those symptoms? What are the foods that you ate in the past 24 hours? And see if there is a connection, a pattern, because most likely you have a sensitivity to those foods. And it doesn't mean you have an allergy per se, but you have a sensitivity where you're having problems breaking that down. Uh, third thing is everyone is, we're all individuals, right? So there's no one size that fits all approach. So when it comes to vitamins, a lot of times I have patients come to me because they're on so many different vitamins. They're not sure when to take it, what to take. And a lot of times, many of them aren't even necessary, but in certain cases, certain vitamins may be necessary for you. So we'll cover that at our retreat for sure. So it's based on your medical background, what vitamins may be more important, more essential for you. So I would say if you want to start at the basics, maybe like a multivitamin every other day, if you have a very well-balanced diet, but you really want to take into account what's your own medical background. So if you're, for instance, let's say for instance, a vegan or a vegetarian, you might benefit from a vitamin B12 supplement. Or if you have heavy menstrual cycles, you probably would benefit from iron supplements. Now, taking iron supplements every day can cause constipation. So maybe changing it to every other day. It's beneficial. So that's what I mean, that every, you know, every vitamin is not meant for everyone and kind of doing a deep dive on what your situation is. So that's the third point is, is not becoming overwhelmed, but really focusing on what are your needs. Mm, And I love the reminder to review our vitamins because a lot of us, even in adulthood, we're still taking the vitamins that our parents shared with us as children or, you know, maybe our doctor in college. And so I so appreciate that nudge to look at like, well, my body's changed. So do I really still need, you know, the Flintstone vitamins? vitamins. Right. Oh gosh, don't get me going. Huh? No, yeah. <laughs> I might get on my soapbox with all the sugar and the health right. washing. I get so upset okay. when people tell me that they are taking things, yeah, like the Flintstone vitamins, because sadly <laughs> the marketing has told people this is good for you. And I'm like, oh, it's necessary. Oh, no, it's not necessary. you read the label and it's like, what, 80% sugar? Like dyes, oh. artificial dyes, and things like that. Yeah. That gets me going. Okay. So yeah. So then just to reiterate, and you saw me making notes because I always learn something when I'm with you, Dr. TJ, the three steps we can take today. And I do stress today because a lot of times we can hear things and like, yeah, 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 I'll get to it. But hopefully my friends, you hear my voice saying today. In fact, if you want to pause this podcast today, We are going to look at taking a prebiotic and a probiotic. We are going to find a place where we can journal our food intake as far as how it's affecting our body so that we can really just look closer at, hmm, do I have a sensitivity to this particular food? And then lastly, we are going to review our vitamins. A lot of us are still taking vitamins from childhood that perhaps aren't serving us and or perhaps we're missing some key nutrients that it's time to incorporate. So did I get those three steps correct? Yeah, you got it. Mm. That's it. (laughs) So Michelle, when you ask me about gut health, gut health to me, it means this comprehensive approach to having a balanced microbiome, meeting all your nutrition 
no needs, feeling that your your entire body is in balance because when your gut health is poor, it can affect your brain, it can affect your thyroid, it can affect your immune system. So good gut health is key to overall wellness. Thank you for sharing that, including I know a lot of my community can often complain about something seemingly unrelated to gut health. So it's, oh, I struggle with migraines. Oh, Mm -hmm. I get hot flashes. Oh, I have this anxiety. And Mm -hmm. intuitively, nine times out of 10, I want to say, well, let's look at your gut health. Like, what are you eating? How, How are you feeling on the inside? Like, let's talk about how the food, the supplements, the minerals you're ingesting can actually help you to solve some of those things. And so do you see that in your practice as far as people coming in, perhaps complaining about one thing, and then you're very clear that let's work on the gut health first, and then naturally things will heal themselves? Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the big example is fatigue, feeling tired. And so one of the things in addition to just checking thyroid panel, blood tests is a vitamin B12 level. You'll see that they have a vitamin B12 deficiency to the lack of either red meat intake or an autoimmune condition. So when you address that, it then addresses the fatigue that they're feeling or the numbness or tingling that they're experiencing in their fingers or toes. So a lot of things are tied into how we're absorbing things in our food, what we're consuming in our food, which can either be pro health for us, or it can actually cause problems for us, increase inflammation. Mm. And now I'm actually curious, like, how did you get into this work specifically around the gut health? And I know you help and heal patients with all kinds of issues. However, the work that I've leaned in that I've seen on your Instagram feed and even the conversations you and I have, it sounds like you have a real gift for helping people look at their gut health. So how did you come to that? Yeah, that's a good question. So actually in medical school, I really was focused on wanting to be a gastroenterologist. Sorry for any of my friends who are GI doctors watching this. But, you know, after the fifth colonoscopy I sat in on, I was like, you know, this is not, well, this is not for me. I want to actually help people. And so, and that's, I mean, they obviously do help people, but it's when you sit across from someone and you really dive deep into the problems that they're having, digestive issues, you find that it has impacted multiple layers of their life. And so it starts from that part. And then you can actually make dedicated changes towards improvement. So that's why I've been more focused in this area. Wanting to make an impact besides just procedures, but wanting to actually see true changes. Your digestive system has, like I said, an, an important link to your mental health, to your immune system, to your thyroid gland, everything. That makes so much sense. And so the preventative health is what lights you up versus when it's yeah. too late and you're looking at all the disease that pe- that you and your colleagues are trying to heal. Issues. Yep. Mm. Oh, that's wonderful. Moving into your dream and passion that I know because we're friends and that is creating this retreat. I know this has been a dream of yours for a while. So can you tell me a few things that you are actually looking forward to in hosting this retreat? Yeah, I I really am looking forward to connecting with people. So it's a small group setting as opposed to like social media, it's very distant. So in my private practice, obviously it's one-on-one. So you have that intimacy and at our retreat by the group size being so small, we can do the same thing, but also in a fun environment, you're in the Caribbean. So how can that not be, you know, how can that not be fun at the same time? So that's what I'm looking forward to is helping people in such a small group while we're all helping each other and having fun at the same time, enjoying ourselves. And then the cooking classes, I mean, we all need some help. So I'm very, I would say that's another thing I'm looking forward to. I feel like I might not be the best assistant for you, but I'll try. (laughs) (laughs) And you know, I'll put you to work. I know, I know, I know. (laughs) For sure, for sure. 
awesome. I am so excited. Like I said, at the top of the hour, I am already packing my bags and I'm wearing <laughs> my beach clothes because I am ready for You're that ready. dreamy house that we have booked that is right on the ocean. Yeah, I think the workshops are going to be amazing because we can do some of them outside by the pool. We can do them inside in the living room. We have an outdoor seating area. So uh, although they will be, you know, medical workshops, they're going to be interactive and they're going to be relevant. So we won't have to talk about things that aren't applicable. It won't be like school. This is going to be knowledge that you can get, that you can bring home with you and make those necessary changes based on what digestive issues you're having. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait to share this with my community and I'm also going to claim my new community. It's really going to be Absolutely. interesting to see who we manifest and attract to this circle. I'm, I'm really excited to love them up. Them. It's going to be fun. Yeah. So as per usual, when I spend time with you, the time just flies by. So before we completely wrap up, is there anything else you want to add? So check out our website, Crave Wellness. Crave is with a K dot com forward slash retreat we have a lot of information on there if you have any questions reach out to michelle or i dm on social media send an email get in touch with us happy to help so with that dr tj i just want to say thank you for the work that you do in the world thank you for pouring into this retreat and thank you for being my partner. I'm really excited to see how we can nurture and heal this community. Thank you for having me, Michelle. It's been a pleasure, as always. Thanks so much for listening to Healthy Sexy Nutrition. Have you been driving, doing laundry, or walking around the neighborhood? Sweet! I've got show notes for you at michellefox.com forward slash podcast. Click over there when you are ready. I will let you know that on the page, you will find resources to support what you just learned on today's show. And of course, you can grab some health supportive freebies as well. If you enjoyed this episode, I would be so honored if you would leave a review on whichever podcast platform you are listening on. It will help me with my mission to build healthier communities one person at a time. Big love from your favorite culinary nutritionist and health coach. And until next week, keep showing up for yourself and know that you and your health matter. 